Welcome back for more Aladdin and the Adventure of All Time. I'm much more excited after the title card. Let's do this! Or not, whatever. I don't care. Gee, it sure is boring around here. <sighs> oh, oh, <clears throat> oh my, oh dear, my cake! I'll be executed, I will! Mmm, chocolate, <laughs> not bad. <laughs> it's funny, because it's not our problem. So because Paige had a crown fall on her head and is wearing strange clothes, they assume she is royalty because people in the past were always idiots. So of course it's right to the palace with them for one of the laziest effects ever. Moving and rotating the frame past its bounds so black area shows up. You know, if that's the best you got, just, just don't. You should see how fat the lions are getting. If the king doesn't like a meal, you feed it to the lions? No, 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 of course not. We feed the cook to the lions. Oh, the cook. The cook? Wow, what horrible people, who by the way won't be brought to justice by the end of this. And now of course Aladdin has to make the next meal, because he's an expert at baking. Was that a, a pinch, a dash, and a splash, or a splash, a dash, and a pinch? Here, read it yourself. I can't. I don't know how. I wish you hadn't told me that. Why? It's very hard to dislike someone you feel sorry for. The ancient Arabian man can't read English? What an idiot! And make sure to get a load of the aspect ratio changing upon zooming out all the way. Only had five years to notice these things. Let's hope it's fit for a king. Presenting the royal family! Cow noises. Because they're fat. I'm laughing so hard right now, I feel like I'm watching a Uva Bowl funny version film. You're King Henry VIII? In the flesh! Or should I say, the bones. But you're so skinny. So skinny, we apparently can't even see when you walk away. Yes, well, trying to live up to my family name has left me without much of an appetite. Well, at least this is one of multiple characters we get voiced by Jim Cummings. That elevates this to the best film in the universe. No, it doesn't. But your weight doesn't have anything to do with what kind of a king you are. They teach King Henry it's okay to be who you are. Until his evil family reminds them Aladdin's getting fed to the lions if he doesn't eat their food. So they just wish him fat so he'll eat everything. Sure, now he's morbidly obese and keeps eating fatty foods constantly, which will no doubt shorten his life, but at least our heroes got what they want. Sultan, take out the royal garbage. Right away, honey bunch. Ooh, 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 my. Ooh, ooh. Garbage day! Oh, dear. Ah. Your Highness, uh, would you pass the gravy? My gravy! Don't hog it, got it! Here we go! <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Parawara manages to get the lamp through stupidity once again, and now that she's finally learned that dumping the lamp in random time periods is a bad idea, especially since she now knows they can time travel, well, she's gonna do it again. 
But luckily, a little ass reading leads them right to where it is. Because Wordsworth, of course, has actual photographs of all these ancient events. And if the lamp was there, of course it's in the photo. Wow, it's stupid for just so many reasons. Thank you, adventure of all time. What the garbage is this shit? The frame rate, the jagged shit, just no one gave the smallest amount of a fuck on this thing, did they? For five years! A couple of stowaways. Stowaways? Did you say stowaways? Welcome aboard! Oh no, Blackbeard is nice and flamboyant and doesn't have the right beard color. Don't tell me your name is Blondebeard. I thought it be. Whoa, nice. What I love about the jokes in this film is you never see them coming. Yes, this makes sense though, since we all know Ben Grimm is the real Blackbeard. It's incredible. We're searching for Blackbeard's treasure, and due to a paradox of time, Ben himself is really Blackbeard. Ha <laughs> that wasn't stupid. Shiver me timbers, what's this? Hey, uh, could I see that? Oh, uh, you can have it as far as I'm concerned. Well, they got what they came for, so they can leave this time without making things worse. Just kidding! <laughs> Ahoy there, ye cowardly swab! Don't be too hard on them! At least they raise some awareness! Surrender your treasure, or I'll sink that frozen junkyard ye call a ship! Now what did I do with that white flag? Oh well, at least they tried! And our heroes are still trying! To make the world a worse place as they turn the nice captain into Blackbeard! You mean, I started the whole blame legend just by going back in time? Who will now not only steal, but rape and murder people! Good job, guys! You know how in most time travel stories people are worried about having adverse effects on history? Well, our shitheads are worried about not having an adverse effect! Oh yeah! All the mermaids flip their tails when they see me bloody sails! <laughs> and mermaids exist, let's just throw that in. <laughs> At least we tried! Polly, help! I can't swim! You see, this is a funny situation because you're about to die! And wow, for animation this stunning, people decide to change skin tones. And who knew that Blackbeard was also known as Blue Mustache? Also his beard was sentient, why the shit not? And of course he wants to kill them now. You see how this was a change for the better, right? Right? Oh, and the book pulled out a pen. Can't wait for the line. Haven't you ever heard that the pen is mightier than the sword. <sighs> I knew it was coming, but it still made me sad to hear it. You know something, Blackbeard? You need a shave. You did this to him, you stupid Aladdin hole! Can we get out of here? We can do anything we want now that we have the lamp. You had it ten minutes ago, you assholes! Well, at least now they get a little bit of what they actually deserve. Getting eaten by the Kraken and stuck in its shit. Seriously, what else would that be? Also, Alan gets stuck halfway out its asshole. Yes. This movie gave us Aladdin being stuck in the Kraken's asshole. Just let that sink in for a bit. Also, don't eat Aladdin, he'll constipate you. 
I'm in love with a post now. It makes absolutely no sense, but I guess it's hilarious. Oh, and Sherapu was the parrot the whole time, sitting on the captain's shoulder and repeating everything he said. I just... Sure, whatever, whatever. So Jafarazad turns her snake into a staff. You know, kinda sorta like some other Aladdin character, just so she can sing her evil song about being evil. And that's about it. Oh wait, it's not that dumb. The knack for being mean seems to suit me. And as I've said, being mean is kinda of fun! Oh, wait, yes it is. The only holiday you get is Halloween, cause she loves being queen of mean. Halloween. They had Halloween there, did they? That makes perfect sense. Who is this Scheherazade? You know, by the way, just kinda came to mind a day after her trying to kill us. Who is this Scheherazade? They call her the queen of me. Hold on, let's watch that again. They call her. The background didn't change, but the characters on screen did. Wow, isn't that really smooth? She was the kindest, noblest, most generous queen in history. He's right. Wait. That name, I know it from somewhere. The magic of Sheherhazayid. Sheherhazayid. My favorite game, the magic of... My favorite game. Well, now I know how to say it, so damn you, sh villain of the movie. Oh, 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 oh not so fast, not so fast. <laughs> So, of course, Jarazabrazazazay takes the lamp to another famous figure from history, cause she's an idiot. She's beautiful. Sure, if you like goddesses. Magic sand to Egypt for a while. Take us to the Queen of the Nile. Oh, pretty good for someone who can't read the book, Aladdin. I'm suspicious of you. Also, what was that? Another mouth just floating in the Kraken? What, were we worried they are gonna get double eaten before they teleported? Anyway, the sands of time even realize these fuckwits are just out to destroy history, so tries to kill them as well. Oh. I sentence you to a lifetime inside the Sphinx. Please, I'll be fair. No, no. I believe I was more than fair with Prince Raji. If I wasn't, may the gods drop the sky on my head. And predictable joke in five, four, three, two. Something broke or fall. Yeah, the pharaoh's head. No, Cleopatra, is queen. Just a little bit of murder. <laughs> Remember the theory of even squashing a butterfly in the past might change the future? Well, these assholes just squash pharaohs with their casual disregard for life in the future. I'm not even joking. Listen to how little they care about killing someone. My father was a king among men, and you squashed him like a beetle. What have you got to say for yourselves? Whoops. Killed someone. Whoops. <laughs> Sacrifice the girl and the book to the Sphinx. What about the boy? This whole thing was his fault anyway. The cute one has a choice. He could spend the rest of his life in prison. Or? Be my husband. When's the wedding? Wow, they don't even care about each other. Oh sure, sacrifice page. Aladdin don't give no shits. What wonderful people. Speaking of which, we're off to the Cave of Blunders, aka the Talking Sphinx, which of course surprises no one because that's how history went and they die. But that's okay because Aladdin's eating and getting married. You are the most beautiful girl I have ever 
ever seen. Well, he says that until he finds out she's fat. Oh no, what a terrible day for Aladdin, the selfish fucking prick. And what should I call you? Uh, how about calling me a cab? Okay, the anachronisms by the genie in Disney's Aladdin made some sense. He was a genie, so he could say he could see into the future and stuff. But Aladdin Hole shouldn't be making references like this. Oh, and Paige and stupid book get out of the Sphinx because they answer a riddle. If you're waiting for Aladdin to try and do anything to save them and redeem himself, well, he's too busy trying to avoid Cleopatra because she's fit. Shazza Razadu better take lessons from you about being evil, Aladdin. Holy shit. My friends may already be dead because I made no attempt whatsoever to save them, and if they are still alive, well, I'll let them die before I kiss Fatu Petra. Sorry, Pharaoh. We need this more than you do. No problem. Is this just a contest now to see who can be the biggest asshole? Cleopatra is more like it. Okay, just making sure. Anyway, sorry for killing you, Pharaoh. Wish there was something we could do. Well, we'll just be taking this magic lamp that grants us wishes and you go fuck yourself for eternity. Well, it almost seems like they try for some redemption when Paige tries to relate to Cleopatra. The boys call me Four Eyes. Oh, they call me Thunder Thighs. Inside, you're the most beautiful and desirable girl in the world. Aw, well, they finally made a difference in the right way for- <laughs> Nah, they wish her beautiful. No lessons learned. Fuck that shit. It's what's on the outside that counts. You're beautiful. Now, if you'll excuse me... I have to go inspire poets. Well, I guess at least the personality change in her wasn't too bad. And cause war between nations. And there it is. And wow, Cleopatra's servants sure have skimpy outfits. I didn't know if that's something these animators can really handle. Wow. Okay, should I be censoring the... What the fuck? Time for my rating. Aladdin and the Adventure of All Time gets a hard R for nudity. Why don't we go everywhere? Meet everyone. Can we? Sure. It's up to you. I wish I had more time. <laughs> Butterfly in the sky, I can go twice as high, take a look, it's in a book, a reading rainbow. Okay, seriously, someone was watching Reading Rainbow before they drew this. For shit! That's what they were on on the cover. I thought it was a magic carpet. You tricked! me! You can fly twice as high, you fox! So they fly through history, destroying things, making... A whole new world! A new fantastic point of... Shit! Shit! Holy shit! <laughs> Whatever. After that, the butterfly betrays them, cause it's awful, they're awful, everyone is awful. Welcome home, Aladdin. Home? Is that a blast from the past? It's a dinosaur! Oh, did you read about those and all those books you don't understand, Aladdin? Aladdin, do something! Did they just reuse that line, or is this piece of brilliance Paige's catchphrase? Aladdin, do something! Aladdin, do something! I wish... Oh, oh, no! I wish it wasn't such a klutz! Ah! into the center of the earth! Yeah, one of the places you could have hit it and they never would have found it, you fucking moron! Oh no, now I can't not use it and instead take it somewhere else, you'd immediately find it. After it! <laughs> Maybe there's some place in history we can hide. 
There's still a little sand left. No, a few grains won't take us back very far. So because they have less sand left, they can be more accurate than they have ever been with any of their jumps so far. Either that or they just decided take us right to the magic lamp made too much fucking sense. Aladdin, do something. Well, now it's time for the most pointless time travel plot in this thing. And that's saying something. It also gives a great excuse to completely replay the scene we just saw, but in sepia tone. Let go of it, you snake. Ooh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. You are a snake. You shouldn't have to explain that. There's still a little sand left. I wish we were with Aladdin. Magic sand, it's time to go. Long time. Oh, that's just wonderful. You tried to make contact with yourself, didn't you? That's a big no-no. That will erase your very existence. Hey, any ideas on how to kill a dinosaur, Wordsworth? Um, an ice age would do the trick. I wish for a glacier! I wish you had a reason to know what a glacier is. Oh well, at least the lamp doesn't know. Your history, Scheherazade! Please, Aladdin, spare me! Yeah, let her touch the lamp. That couldn't backfire. Well, actually it isn't because there are no brain cells to be found in either of these two. So what's the solution? Murder her like the pharaoh? <laughs> That's getting off easy. They're just gonna completely mind rape her into a good person. I mean, sure, it was terrible when she made Droopy Salton fall in love with her, but now that it's the other way around, it's okay. Oh, the prisoners go free! Wow, that skeleton apparently died in prison and now is resurrected to wander the earth as an abomination. What a happy ending for them. And while we're on this, Scheherazade really was the storyteller for A Thousand and One Nights, but she told the story to a king who was beheading a new wife you'd take every day before this as a way to stop him. So, I guess that'd make old droopy shithead that king. Why do you have to be so mean? Look into the mirror and say that, you bastard! Anyway, now that their mind raping and murders are over, Paige is all, I'm gonna miss you, Aladdin, and he's all, Hey, stupid, just take off those ugly glasses and you're beautiful on the outside! The only thing that counts! Fuck seeing shit! Paige awakens to reveal it was all a dream? But at least she's learned that bullies aren't so tough if you bully them first. Leave him alone, Meadow Mouth. <gasps> What'd you call me? <laughs> she called you Meadow Mouth. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Freckle Face? And she saves her little Aladdin clone. My name's Alan. Shut up. I'm Paige. Paige? Wow, what a cool name. It makes the background cut backwards. Do you like to read? I love to. Oh good, he's an upgrade from that illiterate piece of fuck Aladdin hole. I won! Oh, then suddenly Wordsworth. It wasn't a dream. <laughs> This is a pretty funny movie. This is definitely a so bad it's good film. Just everything is wrong in this. Well, except the voice actors. They got Jim Cummings, two of the Powerpuff Girls, had voice actors from both Disney's Aladdin and Page Master, so it really is like the seamless combination of both. No. But I don't know what the hell message they're trying to tell with this. The main characters just go around trying to mold people into worse human beings than themselves, which is pretty tough when they murder with no remorse. This was apparently an experiment by Roger Corman to see how well he could produce cheap animation out of the Philippines like a bunch of his live action films. He even used one of his usual directors from there, Sirio H. Santiago. I'm sure he he knew all about animation, just like the animation team on this where only one person actually worked on one other thing.
There's probably a reason you don't normally see animation outsourced to the Philippines because, well, the animation... <laughs> Do I really need to say any more there? I think I've already worn out the five years in the making thing, so let me say they're the best. Damn it. You know what? <laughs> I wish for everyone to have to endure this film its entirety themselves. That's the lesson I took from this movie. Do unto others before they do to you. Ha 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 well, that didn't work. Oh, pff. Wrong kind of lamp, silly me. <laughs> well, that's slightly suggestive. I don't like this movie, it doesn't look too friendly. This monster seems so fake, my nerves are gonna break. Failures don't let me down, you need to be around. Grab that running one. And blood, I sing a new one. This movie looks shitty. Fail us, so fail us. Bring a multi comedy of fail us, so fail us. And some horror movies of fail us, so fail us. I don't care about how you sound, but fail us, so fail us. What's your opinion about? I'm so sorry, let's never fight again. <laughs> the hell am I doing? Hi guys, check out my Patreon for early mid-roll free episodes, meaning no ads will play in the middle, and other perks.